Joseph at the same time has become the number two after Pharaoh. His tunic of many colors has been changed by the tunic of a servant and then to the tunic that Pharaoh had for him, which was not the tunic of his father. God had something greater for Joseph. And it's true Joseph typified the Messiah. It's true in the jail he saw the elements of wine, bread. It's true Joseph's name was changed to Zephanat Panea, which means in Coptic, Emmanuel. It is true that Joseph saved his people, Israel, from famine and also the nations. But when Joseph received his brothers because there was famine in the land, Joseph is okay if he tricks them at the beginning to see where they were at. But they said, we were 12 brothers and the last one is not with us anymore. Benjamin stayed back home. And Joseph was sad and he feels their sad, but he said, I will leave here Shimeon and you go back and he's not going to be released unless you bring Benjamin here. And they were shocked and they were afraid. So Joseph, by doing this, because he already knows that his father is dead, he's using his power in an evil way. By allowing them to depart, and instead of revealing already his identity, Joseph is also torturing his own father. Because according to the Talmud, they needed to wait almost a year and a half before coming back. So Jacob did not care about Shimeon, Simon. Why? Because he's the son of the ugly woman. He's caring about Benjamin. I don't want to let Benjamin go there. My wife Rachel is dead. Benjamin, stay with me. He is so dysfunctional that he's even protecting Benjamin. And over protecting a child is a recipe for a criminal. That's why Benjamin as a tribe was the most criminal tribe of the whole of Israel. And they almost disappear from the face of the earth. Almost. You know the story of the Levite because you read your Bibles. Almost disappear from the face of the earth because over protecting a child is a recipe for a criminal so what happened there is when the food began to run out you know reuben said we have to go back we have to go back and they said no i won't let benjamin go but reuben said i will give my sons to be killed if reuben does not come that is manipulation how come are you going to offer your sons to death but then Judah intervened because Judah has realized something. My father does not care for Shimeon. He does not care. My father only loves Benjamin, the son of the pretty woman. My father does not love me. It's clear. But I choose, I choose to love Benjamin, to love Shimeon, and also to love my father, even if he has never called me son. I choose to love, even if I am not loved. And he said, I will be responsible for the second time. They go with Benjamin. You know the story how Joseph released him and put the cup that he used in the sack of Benjamin. When the cup is fine, he said, I only want Benjamin as my personal slave. And Judah intervened and said, my Lord, because you're as great as Pharaoh. And then he said, don't do that. There is an old man that is going to die if he doesn't see Benjamin. He said, don't do that. He said, take me instead. Take me as your slave. And Joseph got shocked. Would you do that? And he, Judah, is taking the place of Jesus. He said, yes, I will do that. I will do that. And Joseph cried. 
And he said, I am your brother. I am your brother, Joseph. And you know the story. They reconciled. Jacob came with 70 people, including Dina. They saw Joseph. They rejoiced. They gave him the land of Goshen. But then Joseph made a mistake. And the mistake is that there was famine again. And Joseph did not consult the Lord. And he edited this law. Today, the whole of Egypt, you are my slaves. The whole land belongs to Pharaoh. And only the pagan priests will eat on my table. And Israel got the best land of Egypt. And one day this group, they emancipated and they hated Israel. God has given all the opportunities to Joseph to disciple Egypt. And at the end, he missed the target. He missed the target. So when Jacob is praying for his sons, and he arrived to the number fourth, which is Judah, he said for the first time, and you, my son, you will be the scepter and the lion of the tribe of Judah. And Judah became the father of King David and the Messiah. Why? Because somebody there to take responsibility for his actions and a true change happened in the life of Judah. That is why God did not choose Joseph to be the head of Israel, but she chose the sinner, the addict, the worst of all, because one day he saw his heart and he took responsibility for his action and he was able to show mercy when others would have not shown. And that is the beauty of the Bible. The Bible is a story of broken families. The Bible is a story of imperfect people. The Bible is a story where you see miracles, but also you see miracles through history. You see the hand of God shaping and transforming people. When you see the descendants of the Messiah, there are three women. There is a prostitute called Rahab, also David. Then you see a Moabite. They were the descendants of Law who had incest with his daughter's kindness were not shown to these ladies by his father. Abraham had kindness in his heart, but not Lot. He has half kindness. He had kindness to the angels, but not to his daughters. So God needed to restore kindness. So he started the process of restoring kindness to this pagan nation through Tamar. Who had two sons and one was called Perez, which means breakthrough, who is the father, the forefather of the Messiah. And then you have the story of Ruth, who is also a Moabite, and more kindness is even shown because she's even married to Israel without any weird story, and Boaz, her husband. So God wants to restore, and God knows your story, God knows your family, God knows all the spots in our family, but God wants to restore his father heart. And with this I finish. In Israel, you are considered an orphan if you don't have the presence of your father. If you don't have the provision of your father, but it's also the provision of love. Because a father should never compare. When I compare Rivka, Rivka, why you didn't study? Look at your friend, uh, Khadija, she studied, she's very intelligent. I am comparing, and God will never compare you. But then Rivka, she performs schools and says, you're so intelligent, you're so smart, I love you, I'm so proud of you. What I'm teaching Rivka, only when you perform, I love you, and it's not true. God loves you even when you do not perform, because it's the provision of love. But it's the provision of prestige. I am the son of one of the greatest architects in this world. You know, I grew up with that. I was the director of a university in the Netherlands. I remember my son walking in the campus and telling people, who is your boss? And they were telling you that. And they were laughing because he was conscious of the prestige. 
but many people have no prestige at all. Many people have no protection at all or provision at all. Many people have no the presence of the Father. That means that we are dealing with an orphan generation. There are different kinds of father. The absent father, maybe because he's away, like Jacob was an absent father. Maybe because he got killed. But there is also the father that is passive. A passive father is a father who is incapable to give a vision to their children. He's maybe there, but he's so passive that he's unable to show true leadership at home. And then you have the abusive father. The father that may be so insecure that the only way to get rid of the insecurity is by abusing physically or verbally their children or their wives. But there is the father that says, you will do greater things. And that is the father of Israel. That is Jesus. He said, you will do greater things. He's the father that champions us. He's the father that believes in us regardless of. And I finish with this illustration. I remember when I was in Amsterdam, I have traveled to so many nations. I speak several languages. But I hated the weather in Europe. I hated it. And I was doing a movie for a tribe called the Reef Berbers and the translation of the New Testament in North Morocco. But they were many of them living in Amsterdam. So I was doing that work with a mission called Wycliffe. And I remember that one time I was so tired of trying to learn Berber and Arabic and Dutch at the same time. I was so tired. My brain was like frying that I said to the Lord, man, I cannot handle this anymore. And the Lord spoke to me. All authority has been given to me on heaven and earth. Therefore, go and share this gospel to all the nations. And I will give you a sign of my love. And what is that sign? And I come from a very dysfunctional family. And I have my own story, which is mine to share with those whom I trust. But I believe in the power of the restoration of the living God. And then when I share that, you know, God said, I will give you a sign. And it's the sign of my love for you. Every time the, the canals in Amsterdam gets frozen, that means I love you. Ah, I hated snow and I hated ice. I hated winter. But every time the canals froze, I learned how to ice skate. I started a, a nice hockey team to, to preach the gospel, you know. And then I began to skate, to skate. And one day I was invited to teach in Helsinki, the capital of Finland. It was December 20th. And I remember, and I, I, I am in my room. I, I was asleep, and I, and I heard God's voice. And God said, open the window. And I said, I don't want to open the window. And then he said, open the window, but it's very cold. So I opened the window, and then I heard God's voice saying, what do you see? And I said, I see a frozen lake. And then God spoke to me, I'm screaming and yelling aloud, I love you, and you are not listening. Like Judah, he was not listening. And then I ran to the ice, the frozen lake. I put on my jacket, on a hat like that. I look like a dwarf. I put on my ice hockey. I got my ice hockey stick, the puck. And I began to play hockey alone. It was about 5.30 in the morning. And I am playing ice hockey. Imagine that I was playing with my father because we need to repent from religiosity. God loves is a relationship. That's why he asked Peter, are you my friend? Do you love me? And then he's I'm playing hockey with God. Cha, 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 cha. And of course, it began to snow. I'm sweating, you know. My eyes are with sweat, but also with the snow. The pine trees is so beautiful. And I began to hallucinate. I have a wild imagination. And I began to imagine, you know, Kim David inspired me. Armando, I believe in you. You can do it. Go, go, go. I was like playing against God, you know. And then I saw the church leader, Deborah, Ruth, Esther, etc. Go, Armando, go. Oh, they were like that, yeah, and I'm playing ice hockey, you know, and then I saw Solomon with a lot of wisdom, Armando, I have a strategy for you, I shut up, and I kept playing, you know, and all of a sudden I score, I won, I cheat, but I won, and then I look at my watch, and it was 9 a.m., I have not even had breakfast, and I have to teach. So I ran to the campus, and as I am entering in the university, my feet are like that because I am with ice skates, 
I have a snow that is melting all over, and the students that are whiter than the snow, they are so pale, almost pink, they look at me as I have landed from another planet. And I was the professor. We are not having a breakthrough during the teaching time. The kids look at me all the time. They are so timid. There is no feedback. They are like that, super white. I look like an African black guy compared to them. And then all of a sudden, man, I just gave up. And then I said, I don't know what you have come here to see today. And I said the same thing to you. A guy that is very smart. And then say, I don't think so. I'm not so smart. I have a speech problems. When I was a kid, there were so many sounds that I could not make, like rrr, rrr, etc., that my mom needed to write on the walls, don't ask Armando, they call me Ari, Ariel, don't ask Ariel why he talks like that. I have dyslexia. I cannot do things on internet with numbers, never. I have written the telephone numbers of my home, of my wife, because I always confuse the numbers. Even here, somebody asking, you don't know your own telephone number? And I felt so frozen. I said, I am sick. I have this since I was born. It's not my fault. But I'm not stupid. I have a wife who helps me, and she writes the numbers for me. And then, you know, I said, do you think I am very holy? I pray for people and they never fall. And I have friends that they even look and the people fall, boom, 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 boom. Man, I go, and nobody falls. I'm not so anointed. I'm not. <laughs> but there is something that I have and nobody can take that away from me. And is that he is my father Amen. and I am his son and I am his son and that is the beauty of knowing God when I got to meet Jesus I remember that I spent like three months doubting my girlfriend left me nobody talked to me my mother stopped talking to me my father stopped talking to me I felt alone and one day in that room, I asked God, if you're God, show yourself to me. And God didn't show up. And I turned off the light and I jumped on the bed. If you're God, I want to talk to you. And he didn't talk. I have some question. Why do we have a lot of poor people? Why my mother and my father got divorced? Why I have to go through this nonsense in my life? Why this happened with my sister Patricia? Why, why, why? And God did not answer. If you are God, talk to me. Nothing. And then I said this word. If you are the God that opened the Red Sea for my people to walk on dry land, please talk to me. And all of a sudden I felt such a presence, such a warmth. I began to shake and I closed my eyes and I said, I don't want to open my eyes. If I see something, I'm going to die. And then I said, I don't want to hear a voice. If I hear a voice, I'm going to die of a heart attack. And I said, don't talk to me, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. And I felt such a presence in that room. Don't talk to me, don't talk to me, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. And then all of a sudden, a fire came through here. I began to worship God for the first time in my life. And then I remember a French guy who taught me that prayer that Jesus taught. And I said, our Father that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I I could not talk anymore. And then the revelation came. That is my name. I am Papa. And then he spoke in Hebrew. Ani, Abba, Hatov. I am Papa. That is good. And when I opened my eyes, the room was red. The room was orange. I began to dance alone in that room. I did not have one friend. Nobody believed in Jesus in my family. None of my friends believed in Jesus. I became the only one in the history of that neighborhood and my family. And I remember that I cried and I cried like a kid. And for the first time, I found a shoulder to cry. But God knew my dysfunctionalities. God knew all my past. He knew all my future failures. And he's all the time there saying, I am Papa. 
I love you. I don't love that your shoes are dirty. Remove them. That your jacket is dirty like my kid, Gabriel, when he went to school, he went like that neat, and he always came back so dirty. And I didn't reject him. I said, change and take a shower. I don't reject him. I reject the dirtiness in him. And then I discover how wonderful is the God of Israel that still keeps his covenant. God bless you and shalom. Thank you. I just like to say one prayer, and I saw that in the wall of the pastor is the prayer of the high priest, if you allow me. If you can, guys, please can stand up, and then I pass the microphone to the pastor. I don't know if I will see you again one day, but it's been a privilege to, for me to be able to share my heart. And the prayer goes like, uh, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the face of the Lord shine upon you, upon us. May the Lord have mercy on us. And may the Lord also give us his peace. Mishkan Gan Bethel, Tabernacle of Bethel. Yevarecha ata Adonai penishbirecha. Yair Adonai panav elecha vichunecha. Yemsha Adonai panav elecha. Yeshemcha lecha velishalom. Toda rabba Adonai elochinu melech haolam. Gamata el melech hamlachim. Gamata el melech ve India ve Vangalor. Ani ochev oti. Toda Yeshua, Meshachinu, Bet Kachila, Vangalor, Vyashem, Yeshua Meshachinu, Avinu Meleikenu, Vyashua Hamashiach, Amen. Weren't you blessed this morning? And I believe that this morning there's, there's been a blessing that has come upon this church. And we are blessed, we are honored to have a Messianic rabbi to minister to us this morning. Amen. We'll continue to pray for you, that the Lord would bless you, the Lord will keep you, and the Lord will anoint you much more as you travel to different places and as you minister. I just want to add one other thing as a close in prayer. For the first time he met God, and God introduced himself as father to him. And as far as you and I are concerned, he's a Jew. We are Gentiles. As far as we Gentiles are concerned, we are not Ben. We are Ba. The difference between Ben and Ba, Ben is a biological son of a father. But Ba is adopted. And we've been adopted into the family of God. And not only have we been adopted, we've been grafted as well. Amen? So we do not believe in replacement theology. Can you say amen? amen? We'll continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we continue to bless the nation of Jerusalem. And this church sends money to Jerusalem. You know, for the gospel. And so that uh, Paul's prayer, for my desire to see all of Israel saved. Amen. And we also are involved in Aliyah. We finance Aliyah as well. So let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for this morning. We thank you, dear God. That indeed, it's been a great morning. It's been a blessing. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you take the worthless. Lord, one that means nothing in society. And you can turn it around, O oh God, to be a blessing to the nations, O oh God. And Father, this morning we thank you, Lord. We are so honored. We are so privileged. Because, Lord, we were no one. We were nobody. We were just filth. But, Father, out of your grace, you have chosen us. You have picked us. You have washed all the muck and the filth away from our lives. And, Lord, you have adopted us into your family, O oh God. I mean, thank you, dear Master, that we belong to you this morning and we can call thee Abba Father. Father, we thank you once again and we pray once again, O oh God, this morning, Lord, that you continue to bless Armado as he travels and as he goes to various places. Lord, we pray your mantle of protection upon him. 
We pray, Lord, for his family as well, O oh God. We thank you once again for this morning. And we give you all the praise, the glory, and honor in the name of Yeshua, our Mashiach. Amen. God bless you.